Hi, I'm Julie, and I am a healer, Reiki master teacher, and shamanic priestess in the Los Angeles area. And just like my last um, video blog, I opened up the well of healing just prior to turning on the camera and invoked the healing energies of Mother Earth and the elements and the sacred waters of the stream that is flowing nearby and the wind and the plants are surrounded by willows again. Mm, I love the willows and its healing essence. So I'm going to open myself up. They're taking me down. They're saying, slow down. And on the exhale, spiral deep down into yourself. And on the inhale, rise back up again to the surface world. And then exhale, allowing yourself to spiral down deep into the still, silent place. They're showing me the earth is not as solid as you think it is. And as you spiral down into your body, into your inner being, into your inner realms, that you are moving into that space between they're showing me that what you see as solid is not really solid. It's actually vibrating. Particles vibrating very closely together, but not actually touching. The space between is the space that we are seeking. And that still space. And that space that is connected to everything. And that space that is silent like a silent night. The silent night of your being. And they're reminding me that this is the dream time of year. Longer nights. It's colder in some places. <laughs> And when things, they're showing me my tortoise. I have a tortoise named Eartha. And they're reminding me of how she slows down in the winter and sleeps more. It's very important to get extra sleep at this time. Because when we're, they're telling me when you sleep. Wow. They say that when you sleep, your spirit goes to the dreaming place to that between place, that place that bridges this and that, that place that interconnects, and that's where we integrate. Our most important integrative work is done when we are dreaming. If you, okay, and then they're showing me a television, and if you fall asleep with the television going on, you don't quite get to that place. It's like a part of your brain is still awake and won't let you go into that stillness. And that reminds me of something that one of my teachers said, Orion Foxwood, he's amazing. Um, he said, um, and I want to get this right, even though sound is the beginning of creation, it is, shoot, <laughs> what is... even though sound is the beginning of creation, it is the tree of silence that bears the fruit of wisdom. We know the fruit of wisdom is the apple 
and it's, he's talking about the apple tree, which is one of the sacred trees. And it bears that, that sacred fruit, but if we really want, ah, that's why they're telling me this. Okay, if we really want to uh, cultivate those gifts and bear that fruit, of what we want to manifest, we have to be silent, we have to be still, we have to dream. It's hard to dream when we're surrounded by a lot of noise. You have to detach yourself from the noise. They're showing me the animals that are hibernating and burrowing deeper snuggled up, the bear that sleeps, even the tortoise that hibernates too. She likes to go into the dark places and she likes to be, she's still, everything slow, her, it's like her blood gets thicker, reptiles' blood gets thicker because they can't produce their own heat. Um, so when it's colder, everything just slows down. The, the, the viscosity of our blood increases. And so we're meant to go into that silent place, that silent and still place in between. When we're dreaming, we're there naturally, and we don't have to think about it, but we have to do more than just sleep at night. We have to consciously, they're saying we have to consciously take time to meditate, and that's conscious dreaming. They're saying that this is the time when we go into that still place where we receive gifts. We have to be still in order to, for certain energies to assimilate in our bodies right now. We're shifting in energy, we're healing. And even when you're, when you're healing, you have to be still. If we're moving around and being active all the time, we're not, there's something that can't happen because our, we're engaged in action when we're engaged in conscious stillness of being. After all, we are human beings. Which is in the now moment, the present moment. It doesn't live in tomorrow, it doesn't live in yesterday. And they're saying, they're, the willows are telling, showing me how they drop their leaves in the winter. They become like skeletons. Um, but they're shedding the past, and we're not meant to drag the past around with us. We have to be here, focused, aware, alert. They're saying, because the noise of the outside world is so loud, we have to be present. Present. It, to be present is a gift. To have the ability to be in the present moment, to be in the now, that is a gift in, unto itself because of so many things it accomplishes. Um, they're showing me, like, in that space between... When we go to that space, it's like we're creating a bridge where they're showing me things from other places coming, rising up, rising up from, from the depths, rising up from um, the unconscious into the conscious. And this is a time of year when we exchange gifts and share our gifts, but it's become externalized and commercialized. So I want you to get pause for a moment and go back to the original meaning of gift. What is a gift? An intuitive gift? A creative gift? A gift of being loving to another? A gift of compassion? Wow, I'm, there's so much energy rising up right now because I'm tapping onto something. Um, the gift of love and being loving, that's it. Whoa. Um, we, 
We have to choose it. We have to make it conscious. We have to practice it every day. That is the light within us that we're meant to shine and gift. When people are homeless and struggling on the streets, when they're being attacked because of the color of their skin, when they're being judged because of their beliefs, They're saying, in the face of the storm, they're saying, we're weathering a tough time right now, and, in, and there is a storm. Like an energetic storm, a spiritual storm that is happening behind the scenes that we're not aware of. But this storm, these weather patterns, of the soul are influencing us. Ooh, I'm vibrating. Wow. They're influencing our our moods, our feelings, our actions. If we are closed off to a part of us and judging and vilifying and keeping a part of ourselves in the dark, if we aren't fully integrated, if we haven't fully accepted ourselves in every aspect of ourself, then there's a part of us that's still holding on to fear. We have to face those fears. Trusting in why we are here now, because we're all here for a reason. You're showing, telling me perfect love and perfect trust. Trusting perfectly in why you're here. Trusting in your guidance. Trusting in what you are being shown. Trusting that you are safe and that you are protected. And sometimes you can't see it and sometimes it doesn't feel like it. But there's so many things going on behind the scenes. They're telling me. They're saying it's like ants. Wow. Ants that move mountains. You'll never see it. It's happening beneath the surface. But it's happening and you have to trust it. They say for those that are open and have been doing the work that are seeking truth and seeking wholeness and seeking balance, just nature, help spending time in nature that will help us. They're showing me the full moon that's coming on the 25th. They're showing me the, the sun that is moving into Capricorn on Monday the 21st, which is the solstice, which is the shortest day of the year, longest night, but every day after that, the light grows, and we have to pay attention to that, and we have to celebrate it, and honor that light within us, and we have to grow with the light of the sun. But everything is... They're showing me an alchemist that is going, that is cooking in his mad experimental laboratory. <laughs> and he's distilling down a potion. Hmm. They say that as the nights are... are you know, longer, longer, longer up until Monday, and then they get shorter, shorter, shorter. It's like there's a three, they're showing me it's that there's a three days where everything kind of stays the same. We sit in that energy. They're saying it's an extremely potent time that the energies that we've experienced over the last solar cycle, which is the last year, have become... distilled down within us so the so it's so by our they're saying by your free will like you're reaching down into that well of being and you are drawing up those gifts that you are claiming 
the gifts that are your birthright, the gifts that are a part of your body and your DNA, and I say, but it's in the silence, it's in the dark, it's in the stillness. It's in that place where you plant the seeds and it's in that place where you retrieve hidden gifts, lost treasures of self. And those are the real gifts that we're meant to explore, uncover, reclaim, and draw up into this surface world. And for now, they say, if you don't know what that gift is, make it love. Love first. Ooh, <laughs> love first. Draw that love up. Be loving to yourself. Nourish yourself with the waters of love. And then share that love. Share that gift of love with the world. And that is the only way that we are really going to survive what's happening now in this world as a human race they're showing me we have to we have to they're saying love is your nature to be they say you are wise infinite and loving and you have to remember that and practice that stop being afraid of death there is no end there is only becoming and in that becoming is also remembering and remembering that er original state of purity that is not flawed, that is pure, that is sovereign, that is beautiful. That is what we all are. And we have to reclaim that. And we have to radiate that out so that it helps others remember because we're all reflections of each other. What a gift. What a gift it is to have nature to teach us this. I wasn't expecting this wisdom to flow. And it is so potent and so powerful and beautiful. I'm grateful for the spirits of this place and for nature. Uh, I'm grateful to be able to share this with all of you. And there is one little gift that I'd like to share in light of the winter solstice, the Yule tide that is upon us. It's a slight twist on the original Twas the Night Before Christmas. Twas the night before Yuletide, and all through the glen, not a creature was stirring, not a fox, not a hen. A mantle of snow shone brightly that night, as it lay on the ground, reflecting moonlight. The fairies were nestled all snug in their trees, unmindful of flurries and a chilly north breeze. The elves and the gnomes were down in their burrows, sleeping like babes in their soft earthen furrows. When lo, the earth moved with a thunderous quake, causing chairs to fall over and dishes to break. The little folk scrambled to get on their feet, then raced to the river where they usually meet. What happened, they wondered, they questioned, they probed, as they shivered in night clothes, some bare-armed, some robed. What caused the earth's shudder? What caused her to shiver? They all spoke at once as they stood by the river. Then what to their wondering eyes should appear but a shining gold light in the shape of a sphere. It blinked and it twinkled. It winked like an eye. 
then it flew straight up and was lost in the sky. Before they could murmur, before they could bustle, there emerged from the crowd with a swish and a rustle a stately old crone with her hand on a cane, resplendent in green and with a flowing white mane. As she passed by them, the old crone's perfume, smelling of meadows and flowers abloom, made each of the fay folk think of the spring when the earth wakes from slumber and the birds start to sing. My name is Gaia, the old crone proclaimed. And a voice that was at once both wild and tamed. I've come to remind you, for you seem to forget, that Yule is the time of rebirth and yet I see no hearth fires, hear no music, no bells. The air isn't filled with rich fragrant smells of baking and roasting and simmering stews of cider that's mulled or other hot brews. There aren't any children at play in the snow or houses lit up by a candle's glow. Have you forgotten, my children, the fun of celebrating the rebirth of the sun? She looked at the Fay folk, her eyes going round as they shuffled their feet and they stared at the ground. And she smiled the smile that brings light to the day. Come, my children, she said, let's play. They gathered the mistletoe, gathered the holly, threw off the drab and drew on the, the jolly. They lit a big bonfire and they danced and they sang. They brought out the bells and clapped when they rang. They strung lights on the trees and bows, oh so merry, in colors of cranberry, bayberry, and cherry. They built giant snowmen and adorned them with hats, then surrounded them with snowbirds and snow cats and bats. Then just before dawn, at the end of their fest, they went homeward to seek out their rest. The fay folk they gathered round their favorite oak tree and welcomed the sun neath the tree's finery. They were just reaching home when it suddenly came. The gold light returned like an arrow shot flame. It lit on the treetop where they could see from afar. The golden-like sphere turned into a star. The old crone just smiled at the beautiful sight. Happy Yuletide, my children, she whispered. Good night. Hmm. Actually, the author of this tale is unknown, though it may be C.C. Williford. So, I wanted to share that with you. As the seasons shift into the depths of winter, into the depths of the dreaming time of year, the sleeping time of year, the dark time of year. Honor your dark. Honor the parts of you that you have vilified. Mm. Forgive yourself for judging yourself in the past and choose to accept yourself fully and completely right here, right now. Because wholeness and choosing wholeness is one of the 
is the greatest gift you can give yourself this holiday season. And with that, I wish you joy and light and love and peace and all the good things you desire. Until next time. Namaste. And blessed be.